Welcome to Great Overload, I'm Anthony. Today I'm going to take a quick look at the Microsoft Xbox One X announcement at E3 today. So let's dive in. I think Microsoft did an excellent job announcing the Xbox One X. This used to be called Project Scorpio for the last year or so. Actually just over a year to uh, last E3. And I was very excited to go through and watch this console. I don't have a console yet. I've been thinking about getting one. And I've been kind of putting together all the data to see which one I want. I have to follow the console market, though, for many, many years. And played on many, many different consoles over the years. But let's dive in to go right through it. And the price, and we'll start with the price because I think that's what everyone really wants to know. And then go through the specs. Is the price is going to be 499 United States dollars. And I think it's going to be... a, a Great price overall. That's my thoughts on the price right now. Is that it's great. I mean, I, looking at a competitive standpoint of where the PS4 Pro, PS4 Pro 4 Pro is, is that it, you know it's it's higher. It's a hundred dollars more expensive. But the performance value, as we walk through the specs here, I think is there. So first off, I wanted to comment about the size, and it is now the smallest console Xbox has ever made. I think that this is a great improvement, especially, you know, the VCR that we had with the Xbox One, and then you had a better console design, especially with the One S, and now it's even smaller than the One S. It's 40% smaller, they said. Then they are going to have, they have an 8-core um, AMD custom CPU. They didn't really, it's clocked at 2.3. They didn't have anything specific to which cores or whatever that they're using. I think that this is probably more customized chip from AMD that they're using to get the specific tuning that they want, which I think is a great improvement. I think that making the Xbox more performant and being better at what they're supposed to do is play games and be able to get in and out of the Games Fest is a great achievement as well. And let's dive into the uh, crux of it all, and that's the biggest portion is the 6 teraflop GPU clocked at 1.172 gigahertz this is i think this is what makes it this is what makes your console your console and this is why you want to go play games on a console is that you hook it up for your tv for a great price uh, overall right for a six teraflop gpu that can go do it now remember like if you were going to get like a 580 amd rx5 radeon 580 that would run and that's about six teraflops right there that's 220 right there so if you factor that into the console price, you know, that's something to factor into as well. But I think that overall, this is a great and then a great achievement to do is to have that. And it's going to provide some uh, great 4K benefits, which we'll get into here in a little bit. Um, on the memory side of things, and I'm going to, have to go through all this memory stuff here right now, is that it's got 8 gigs of flash memory. And I don't know what they're exactly using it for. I like that to know. But then it's got 1 terabyte of internal storage. So this is all your games and everything else going on it. It's one terabyte for the starting introductory rate. I think that that's actually might be kind of small for an introductory rate for a console here, but um, I can see why if all the other parts are kind of you know more expensive, you kind of go a little bit lower on the one terabyte drive, but we'll see how it all is. Then it's got and how well it performs as well as we install games, especially 4K content, which can be more um, storage. Um, use more storage so but you got 12 gigs of gddr5 at 326 gigabytes per second so this is awesome this is the fastest that i think is out there right now i think the ps4 pro is lower but this is pretty good you're you know this is what graphics cards are known for naming off to see, see how fast their memory is as well yeah, and this is a great achievement as uh, for Xbox to go through, and then the the 4K capabilities of this box is is amazing too. I really like it to get the UHD um, Blu-ray optical drive as well in the system. That's one benefit for me, especially that I want to go through and be able to use um, if I do, because I'll be hooking it up to my TV, my 4K TV with HDR as well, and then the um, it's going to have. HDR of course, HDR10 support that's going to be supported with the wide color gamut and it's a, they say this um, also going to be um, HDMI 2.0B out. So the out HDMI is going to be 2.0B 
and this will support you know 2160p at 60 hertz also i th and i really like this a lot this is exciting to me because they're going to support amd FreeSync, which means i'm going to have to get a new tv but um as soon as tvs come out and do it but then you get some of the screen tearing and everything else that's with amd FreeSync, and i encourage you to take a look at, at that if you don't know everything about it and you get those benefits and that's a huge benefit to gamers in general the audio part of it i think and i always like improvement in audio but they're going to have adobe atmos on there true hd at with atmos so that's an improvement um they, you know, basically all the audio standards that they have out there, but the Adobe one is pretty big, especially with the new all the new Atmos stuff that they're coming out with, and then the wireless capabilities, of course, they're going to have Bluetooth for the a lot of the um, controller stuff and everything else. The Wi-Fi, which I'm, if you don't direct um, wire it, is you know a benefit that you're going to want, and then they have IR as well. And then the connectivity in the back ports are very important too for a lot of people, especially because you're going to use them. Um, to hook up to your TV, put in power, and then also uh, the, they have one HDMI in, which is going to be 1.4B, and then they're going to have a power port as well, and then they have that 2.0 out. They have a U three USB 3 ports, one is in the front, two are in the back, um, an IR out port, um, a spiffy port, you know, your audio, and then an Ethernet port. and if I put it the Xbox where it is, I'm going to try to keep it close to the router so I can get a wired connection because I think that's beneficial for me at least anyways. So then they're also, I think the most interesting part of this now that we took a look at the all type and the specs is that they got this small form factor, right? And the best part about it is how they're actually cooling it because you got, you got this huge processor with eight cores and then this six teraflop GPU and now you need to cool it. And how are you going to do that? And they came out with a liquid-cooled vapor chamber that's uh, that you know has this all this optimizations and everything else. They're optimizing the power management delivery system, that, and so they're kind of going through all the heat, making sure that they get um, optimal power consumption, which is huge. Um, and then what they call it is using the Hovis method method of cutting edge digital power delivery system of custom tuned to each console's voltage. And then, uh, so that's going to help, you know, depending upon how you tune it, is going to actually increase, decrease heat, you know, uh, quite a bit, or can. And then the liquid side of it, uh, the cooling chamber, is, a, you know, it's got that liquid cooling chamber, and then it's a supercharged centrifugal, or supercharged style centrifugal fan to ensure it stays cool. And, you know, that's, you know, the 360 had some heating problems. I'm pretty sure Microsoft went through and tested these a lot because they don't want to repeat of that again. So uh, this is just an awesome part. I've went through a lot of specs here. I like this a lot. I think this is a great spec console. As you go through and you start taking out all the things that they put in there against the price that they have and kind of averaging out what the price is, I think that this is a great value of a console overall. Uh, you'd be hard-pressed to um, argue that it should be much lower for what they put in there. And I think that that's the good part about it uh, is now competitive wise, the PS4 Pro price, you know, that's something still out in the open that I'm going to keep an eye on going forward. But they announced a lot of other um, things at this whole E3 event. But the one other big thing that's going to relate to this council a little bit that I want to touch on first is backwards compatibility. And they said that the Xbox is going to now include the original Xbox games in backwards compatibility. And they're going to be bringing them, those games to all of us here very soon. And I'm excited. They said this year that it's coming out for with. And the Xbox One X is going to be able to load these games faster and also going to have improved anti-aliasing, which I think is an amazing thing to have as well. So I, I want this video ran a little bit long, but I want my final thoughts on this whole thing, including the compatibility, is that I think that this is a great council. Now I I'm gonna get it because or I'm thinking about very much getting it, I should say, because I do have a 4K TV and everything else. I don't have a prior council. If I had a 1080p, they still have benefits of super sampling for games that have you know better you know content and um, visuals so to use on 1080p. But um, that's going to be something for you to maybe look more towards if you that's something you have. But if you have 4K, I like this a lot. I think it's a great improvement. I can't wait to be able to 
test it out a little bit. I hopefully will have a chance to get one as well. And I am very excited and very pleased with my, what Microsoft announced. Now I just can't wait for what Sony has. Competition is great when you got um, them going back and forth. So I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for stopping by Gray Overload here and supporting this channel and continue to help it grow. Thanks for watching Gray Overload. If you like this content, be sure to subscribe and don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Gray Overload.